tanks filled with liquid are common in industrial applications uh, shown here this is a draining fuel tank out of a car uh, here's a leaking tank also a fuel tank uh, so this one is being drained intentionally and this one is leaking unintentionally uh, here's a large uh, storage tank probably also actually storing fuel in here uh, and what these things all have in common is that there are they are these um, tanks that are filled with fluid and they uh, the fluid is flowing out by gravity and so you can imagine here you would turn that valve and the fluid would flow down that pipe uh, here there this fluid is draining out uh, by gravity and so this is what we want to simulate and to do this we're going to introduce a procedure where we use a, a mesh that a computational mesh that moves with the draining fluid this is the geometry that we use for the model of the, the tank it's just a simple square uh, one meter on a side and there's a point right there that will allow us to isolate this part of the edge and this will be the uh, part of the tank where the drainage occurs so the boundary conditions that we have on this square um, really consist of two sets we have to have boundary conditions for the fluid problem and boundary conditions for the moving mesh uh, this problem will be uh, a bit unusual in that the computational mesh will uh, move around and track the fluid so um, the fluid boundary conditions are fairly straightforward all of the green dashed lines are no flow the yellow here this is the outflow point and we'll simply set the pressure uh, here equal to zero over this interval at the surface up here we'll set the the surface of the fluid here equal to zero and uh, we can also put surface tension on there uh, but primarily we're going to be thinking about this it's fairly large so the surface tension won't really affect it a great deal so the the um, fluid boundary is uh, that the pressure is equal to zero uh, there'll be atmospheric pressure here and so because the fluid pressure is only constrained um, this boundary can can move around um, and indeed that's what we see in in tanks now we need another set of boundary conditions for the mesh the mesh is going to move so we have to uh, tell it what happens at the boundaries and along the the green boundaries and along this yellow one we're going to constrain the velocity of the mesh to um, zero the normal velocity so basically the mesh uh, the velocity of the mesh in this direction is zero it can slide this way parallel to the boundary but it can't move that way and then up here along the red boundary this is the free surface and the mesh velocity normal to the boundary will be equal to this this is the velocity in the x direction and that's the normal the component of the normal vector uh, normal to the boundary in the x direction and the velocity in the y and the component of the normal vector in the y direction and so this we will say is the um, normal velocity of the mesh this is a boundary condition for the mesh and, and basically what this does is it couples the mesh to the fluid and allows the mesh to track the moving fluid surface okay so this will be how we set up the model here's the ComSol model that I set up to solve this problem it's called moving mesh tank drain version 2 baseline and it's set up in ComSol uh, version 4.3b the geometry consists of this one meter square uh, subdomain and we just put a point right here at this location the physics that we used were uh, or is the laminar two-phase flow moving mesh and we can see where that came from if we go to add physics down here to multi-phase flow and this is in the multi-phase flow category and it's a two-phase flow moving mesh so we add that to our model and that will give us these physics so um, here's what we've got the um, these 
nodes right here are, um, are the defaults. And so we just say that it's free deformation. We select that. Uh, prescribe uh, mesh displacement. We'll, uh, we override all of the boundaries. This is the default boundary condition for the wall. We'll override that. Um, and so it doesn't matter what's there. And this is just the fluid properties for the laminar flow uh, physics. And we need to give the density and the viscosity here. Uh, initial values. In this case, I'm going to uh, give the fluid a density so it will flow out by gravity. Uh, so I assign the initial pressure equal to the, the unit weight, uh, which is the gravity times the density uh, times the depth. So since the height here is 1, uh, 1 minus y is equal to the depth. So this gives us an initial pressure. And then the rest of this are the boundary conditions. And remember, we need two boundary conditions, one for the fluid and one for the mesh. So the first ones that I have here are for the fluid. We have an outlet uh, boundary condition right here where the fluid will flow out. And we're assigning a pressure there uh, equal to zero, just atmospheric pressure. And then these other boundaries here, the walls of the tank, are uh, these Navier slip boundaries. And the upper boundary is an external fluid interface where we'll assign an external pressure and we'll also use uh, surface tension uh, right here. So these uh, nodes right here are what define the fluid boundaries. Now this one defines the unit weight of the fluid, the volume force, and I give it just here the unit weight, the density times the gravity. And then these two here are the velocity or the boundary conditions for the mesh. And so the upper boundary has a prescribed normal velocity uh, of that. Uh, this is the fluid velocity that the mesh is tracking. And the prescribed mesh velocity on everywhere else is equal to zero, normal to the boundary. And let me show you how I put that in there. I go to um, moving mesh, prescribe mesh velocity, and then I selected a boundary. And uh, the default is that the x and y velocities of the mesh are zero. Um, but what I want to do is switch here to the boundary system uh, and uh, uncheck. This is the tangential velocity. And here I'm now prescribing only the normal velocity. So that's how I set those nodes up there. OK, so we can take a look at the default mesh. And we're ready to run it. And let's give it a try. So here's the run. You can see this is the fluid draining out. I've got these uh, streamlines in here. The red lines are streamlines. And you can see it's flowing out uh, and compressing. And as it's doing that, the uh, elements are becoming quite elongate here. Uh, and as a result, the mesh quality, uh, which is a measure of the um, elongation of the mesh, the mesh quality is becoming quite low. And as a result, the, the solution is slowing down. The convergence is getting more difficult. So this, uh, this reciprocal of the step size is increasing. And the uh, solution, it's, it's, getting, it's running slower. And you can see that uh, here it's got some some pretty significant difficulties. OK, so this analysis, it, it probably gave us some pretty good results for about five seconds. OK, so let's take a look at the result that we have here. If I go to the plot, the way I set this up, I'm plotting a surface. But I have this wireframe setting turned on. If I turn that off uh, and replot it, then you can see that I've got a more conventional looking plot. But the wireframe allows me to see the mesh. And that's useful when I'm watching what's going on so I can see how the mesh is deforming. And I also have streamlines turned on here so I can take a look at uh, the streamlines during the flow. And you can see all the, the streamlines are converging on this outflow point. So I'm going to turn those off for now so that we can get a better look at the mesh. 
And um, there we see it after uh, seven tenths of a second. And we go out five seconds. And you can see that it's, uh, it's getting quite elongate here. So the mesh quality is getting low. And uh, that's what causes the solution to go slower and slower. And so what we can do, though, is uh, use a remeshing capability that will automatically stop the simulation when the mesh quality gets to be too low and remesh it and then automatically start the uh, sim simulation up. And so to do that, um, we go here to um, the study extensions and this checkbox here allows us to do the automatic remeshing. So when you do that, you're going to create another data set. And uh, this uh, simulation is called solution three. And I know that solution three is going to be plotted here in group seven. It may be plotted in a different uh, figure when you do this, but that it's called group seven. So I'm going to go and change it to group seven. Um, so when I run this, I can watch the results. So here we go. This is with automatic remeshing. So it goes. So there it shifts around when it remeshes. But you can see now there's the new mesh. This is the third mesh. Now it changes again. And so each time the elements get to be elongate, the mesh quality goes down. It automatically remeshes. And now the run goes much smoother. It runs out to 10 seconds, and we could probably get it to run even longer. So one thing, though, that I should point out um, when, when you're doing this, if you go here to the study and go down here to automatic remeshing, open this up, and you come down here, see this consistent initialization. That's turned on. I saw, but ordinarily, when you first start this, it'll be off. And if it's off, you're going to have some difficulties probably. I'm going to go and repeat this with the uh, initialization, the automatic initialization uh, turned off. And let's see what happens now. So there's the model. It goes, and now it's going to remesh. There's the new mesh. It keeps going. And there we go. So there's the error and use consistent initialization, then I can get it to run. OK, so that's a quick introduction to remeshing. This uh, gives you quite a, a, a nice capability to run models where the shape uh, changes and the mesh changes in response